Hello, welcome to my video on We Must Overcommit to Win Business. My name is Neil Potter with Improving Your Small Business and today we'll discuss the whole realm of when to promise, how to promise and managing commitments. So two questions to ask at the beginning is can your company deliver what it promises? Do you ever get caught out by over promising? If you do, keep on watching and we'll discuss in detail how to manage that. If you are able to deliver what you promise on a regular basis, then watch another video. Okay, enjoy this one, uh, but you're good to go right now. Second question, if you promise more than you can be delivered, or more than you can deliver, you know, why does that actually occur? You know, either yourself or your staff, why does that occur? Is it to avoid confrontation? Sometimes the salesperson or staff member says yes to things, because a no would cause potential confrontation. And their you know, nature of that person is to avoid all confrontation. So to avoid any kind of difficult or even a little bit difficult discussion with the customer, um, they're gonna say yes to things, and then hopefully they're gonna recover later on with a, a forgiveness. Or do you make a sale? Uh, do you ever commit to make a sale? And you then assume in the back of your head you can get that forgiveness later on. So obviously I don't recommend this, but there could be some underlying reasons why people in the company overcommit. Maybe they don't want to overcommit, but they do so because to not overcommit would be a level of uh, discussion or confrontation uh, with the other person, and they're trying to avoid that at all costs. Now, if there's ever a discussion about whether we should overcommit or undercommit or promise or overpromise or whatever, um, or any other question about how you should as a company operate, I always refer people to back to the golden rule. And the golden rule is simply treat others as you would like to be treated. So a question to ask, and I've been asking for over three decades, and I always get the same response, is how would you like to be sold to? So if you are in a selling situation and somebody's selling something to you, so they're the salespeople person and you are the customer recipient, now, what would you think is a great salesperson if they're selling to you? What kind of things would they be doing as a company? They would be helpful. Uh, they would understand your needs. Uh, they wouldn't pressure you. Uh, you would say they give you factual information. They listened to my questions. Uh, they were knowledgeable about the product. Uh, didn't sell me more than I wanted. They either gave me options or they kind of just pinned the solution to kind of where I actually needed it to be. Uh, they may be offered free or low cost trails to kind of find things out. Uh, they gave me a fair price uh, and a good return policy. Uh, they provided excellent uh, post sale support and they followed through on their commitments. So if you ask anybody, in most of my experience, anybody anywhere to uh, give you a description of a really good sales outcome where the customers are really thrilled with the way the sales and you know, the transaction kind of went. They always give you the same list. Always, doesn't matter who it is, where they are. I've been asking the question to people for over 30 years around the globe, and it's always the same uh, response. But in there are the two things that relate to this video. That is that they give me factual information. So when the salesperson was talking, he or she would actually just kind of give them absolutely honest you know, facts about uh, the current situation. And at the end, they followed through on their uh, commitments uh, that you know whatever they promised, they actually did. Now, if you are in a situation where you really want to promise more, okay, then I think that's a good goal. Okay, uh, definitely I would work towards that goal. Okay, maybe there are things which you want to be able to do, and actually you know level with the customer and say we actually can do these things, but I would make that a goal of the company to improve to, versus a kind of a false promise in a sales pitch. So as you run the company and work with your colleagues, just be wary of these kind of sentences that may be being kind of banded around in discussion, because they could be a slippery slope, you know, downhill uh, to making you know, bad promises. If you hear a colleague say, uh, we agreed to crazy schedules because uh, we're customer focused, that would be indicative of this is a high risk. You may not be able to achieve it. It's probably going to be a bit of a failure at the end and customers are going to be mad. But, you know, we did this crazy thing, 
or we promised the crazy thing uh, just because we were quotes customer focused in the previous golden rule list nobody wanted crazy high risk schedules uh, that you couldn't achieve so you know this is a very early warning maybe you know you're over promising on a particular contract we promise more than we can do so we can win sales um, that sounds good on paper uh, but if you actually parse it out you know why would you why would you lie why would anybody lie to win a sale okay particularly if we know for sure the responses out of the golden rule say exactly the opposite of that okay this is just kind of rationalization of not thinking through the contract not planning not estimating not knowing okay uh just kind of going through the kind of sound bite motion to kind of get the customer to kind of smile and then wondering how we're going to do that okay uh, it is not realistic to make realistic commitments yes i really heard people kind of say that okay um <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know even what to say. But I'm speechless again. I don't know what to say about that. Um, uh, it, if you're not going to make realistic commitments, then I would say that is unrealistic. Okay, okay complete waffle. Okay, a complete waffle. If you hear that, then you're definitely you're down the slope already. Your, your people, your colleagues uh, get down the slippery slope. Uh, we tell management or the customer what they want to hear. Again, this is the exact opposite of what the golden rule will kind of tell us, you know. And what at what point would that be really a good idea, you know? Uh, I think what that's telling me is that if we were to tell the customer or management the truth, okay, we would get into a maybe a discussion that would be uncomfortable to us uh, and we don't want to do that because we might lose or we might look bad or kind of some negative emotion may occur. And to avoid the negative emotion and the hard work of discussion, then we're going to just kind of say yes and uh, tell them whatever they want to hear. Okay. And that would be, I think, a major slippery slope step uh, being taken. The business climate makes us overcommit. We have no choice. Uh, complete kerfuffle, waffle, um, <laughs> complete complete nonsense. Okay. Um, your company and your staff have lots and lots of choices. Okay. And one of the choices is not overcommitting. Uh, it's a, it's been a, a choice maybe for thousands of years. I've not been around for thousands of years. I don't know, but I'm just assuming for thousands of years it was always a choice. Okay. Uh, it definitely is a choice now. Okay. Uh, we say yes to make the customer go away and stop annoying us. Uh, this would be very much very similar to the one above. Basically, we're trying to avoid any kind of deep dark discussion with the customer about truth for truth or facts because that may make us feel bad and we do everything to make us not feel bad okay. I would say um, that is a skill of the salesperson or the staff member and they need more skills to address and deal with uh, customers okay. um, the economy is booming and therefore there's no time to make an accurate proposal we are successful without those practices that is a little on the delusional side okay uh, yes you may have been or the company may have been successful without doing that and they may have been very lucky that when they bid on things they're always kind of bidding either in the ballpark and they can deal with it or they're bidding a bit high and they kind of you know can get away with that and uh, they're not caught out but to say that just because the economy is booming therefore we should no do no work on estimating and planning uh, on bids and uh, proposals and whatever is kind of just you know tying something that doesn't kind of relate to it um, you don't want to be as a company caught out uh, with a contract where you completely underbid and then somebody holds your uh, tiddly feet to the fire okay and makes you cough up you know with the service you know you might run into that situation where you have no choice but to deliver or you're going to get legal action or something nasty going on and therefore you do have to lose money so you're trying to just gonna do your best job on proposing and estimating but not say we can't do it because you know we're amazingly successful and the economy doesn't allow, even allow us to that's just kind of silliness to be. and then the economy is in a slump and we must underbid and over promise to get in the door with the customer okay this is the exact opposite rationale probably by the same people uh, that says you know we can never propose or estimate because 
the economy is either successful or the economy is either referring. Okay, uh, this is complete baloney. Okay, so as you listen to your company people and the customers and uh, salespeople, whatever, just going to listen out for these type of phrases that may be the beginning rationalization uh, that could lead to some you know, downstream pain and consequence by either over committing or over promising or getting into trouble. So what are some good practices to make commitments? I uh, have some good ones I think you can uh, stand by. Um, one thing is to clarify when a commitment is actually required. You might, your brain might be telling you, I better promise now okay, to get in the door. I better make a make a number up now to gonna keep the customer you no know, on the next step. Okay. Rather than actually ask the question, you know, this is a complicated project. Um, when do you need to know by? Okay, when do you need to know the cost? Okay. How many hours, days, or whatever do I have uh, to actually put together a schedule, proposal, budget, to give you a good sense of the true cost of this particular work? So rather than your brain guessing. I bet they want one now, like a number now, and you're making something up and getting into trouble. I ask the question, when do you need to know by? Okay, maybe is in a, uh, and by the end of the day. Uh, when I ask my customers this question, it's typically within a week. Okay, oh, I have a whole week to do it. It take me an hour to do it, but I now have a whole week. So I say, well, you want it in a week? I'll have it in two days. Okay, so we make it a bit, a bit faster. Uh, request time to do it. If it's a big contract, Maybe you have to get more people involved to kind of bid on the bits and pieces of it. Maybe there's more research required uh, in your kind of uh, side of the world and therefore request time. Now actually say it's going to take us three days to do this, either because of people's availability or the complexity of it or the size of it, uh, request time. Um, if some of the work is ambiguous and some of the work is really concise and they're very, very detailed or now clear, what you could do is commit to the bits you know. So for the first third of the contract, we know exactly what you want. We've done it before. We can give you a number after an hour, two hours, a day, whatever it is, you give them a number. And then establish a deadline to give them the rest of it, which, which is ambiguous. Maybe more research is needed, should dig some holes, kind of find out where the pipe goes and where the cabling goes and figure out kind of what's there. And then after some research, then you can come up with the numbers for the rest of it. So if you want to kind of get the customer kind of going and you know, feel like you're making progress with them, then yeah, commit to the bits you can absolutely commit to and say, we're going to work on the rest of it you know, a little bit later and give them a deadline for that. They may be more thrilled because you are accurate and you're honest and you're credible versus making some kind of number up and then coming back and later and saying, well, that number was just kind of made up and we didn't actually mean it. Uh, here's a kind of new number. Uh, which they would then be mad at. Um, assess and communicate risk um, and your availability. So risk is a potential problem. Now, if there are things that could go wrong, the material could fail. The color may be not with the right match. Okay? Uh, the railing you're going to put up can be going to be too long or too short, or could corrode or could discolor or whatever. If there are risks in the whole thing, then point out the risks. Maybe if the customer's happy with those risks, no, no big deal. Maybe if you assess the risk, you can mitigate the risk and maybe you're going to work on a better solution. But don't hide the risk and then cause that to be a surprise later. Now, a risk is a potential problem, uh, but you then uh, communicate and track and mitigate. If you don't do that, then you're basically allowing these what could be small problems at the beginning, then kind of build up over time and they become a major surprise to the customer kind of later on. Uh, provide options. If your proposal has many options to it, color options, size options, weight options, uh, cost options, the deluxe versus the cheap option, write down all the options and price each one and make sure, make sure each one is achievable. Okay. People on the customer side of the world and the management side of the world love options, particularly when all the options are credible and achievable because then they feel like they are making the best choice for themselves okay, and it becomes their choice. So do put the cheap version in there. So this is the cheap version. Okay? Uh, do put the middle of the road workable solution in there. 
and do put the deluxe version in there. Maybe money's no issue, okay? And they actually like the deluxe version. They had no idea about the deluxe, ver the, the, the deluxe version. So put the deluxe version in there and maybe they pick it. But make sure every option you put in there is actually something you can do and uh, you can follow through on uh, the commitment. And then uh, make plans and estimates comprehensive uh, so they can be believable. If you're going to say we can build this thing for the customer at $100,000 and there's barely any detail about anything on there, I wouldn't buy that myself. It's kind of uh, unbelievable. You know, where's the 100K going? Okay. But if you give me a detailed breakdown of the work, okay, uh, the labor, materials, maybe a range if you don't know for sure, it's between A and B, uh, put the range in there, then it's like, oh, okay, the, the guy's thought about this. He or she kind of knows the details, they know what to look out for, they've kind of thought through things. It's a very believable, you know, detailed thing. Maybe even there's choices in there to pick and choose from. And I'm going to go with that because I trust now the vendor, A, knows what they're doing, and B, is honest enough to kind of share the details. And I can then work with them as a, and a partner in, in, in the contract uh, to kind of see the thing th through to the end. But a bunch of, you know, hype at the beginning and a big number, uh, to me, is just a hype and a big number. There is more. Um, there are several articles on the website. Uh, go take a look at them. Uh, there will be more articles coming every month or so and uh, videos that accompany those two. I am a small business myself, have been for a long time. Uh, go to our services page, see what we kind of do. And if you have any questions, comments, issues, discussion points, either put them in the video comments below or go to our contact page and uh, send me an email. Uh, call me up, whatever you like to do, and I'll be happy to discuss, answer questions uh, uh, as much as you need. Thank you. Bye-bye.